Okay, so what is the resonator? Well, if you think of Kaivo like an instrument, say a violin, well then the resonator is going to be the strings of the violin. And if you remember back to the key module, Kaivo has between one and eight different voices where each voice gets its own independent version of each module within Kaivo. And this applies as well to the resonator. And what the resonator does is it actually uses physics equations that describe the real-time reaction of resonant materials to an incoming signal. And basically what this all means is the resonator allows you to harness the character and the behavior of modeled strings, pipes, chimes, and all sorts of stuff. And furthermore, the resonator can also act like a filter in an analog synth or even an oscillator. And it does this by adding or subtracting frequencies from the input. And we call this kind of behavior nonlinear, and we like it. So with all that, let's dive into the controls. First up, we have the mode menu. It's right above the word resonator, and you can see that it says none right now. You click on none there, and we get a list of different resonators. So let's start with the metal string, and we'll bring that into the mix. And now I'm gonna turn down the granulator so we can hear just the resonator. Now let's go through some of these sounds. Here's the metal string. We can go to the nylon string the gut string, which is my personal favorite, the small chime, the medium chime, the large chime, small spring, and large spring. Okay, so let's go back to the gut string really quick because I just want to point out that the resonator sonic quality is going to change depending on what kind of sound you have loaded into the granulator. So let's go from the four harmonics to the sine to saw wave. And we'll turn down the granulator so we can just hear the resonator. Now let's switch it again. Let's just randomly pick one. Let's go to impacts, uh, glass impacts. And of course, if I'm using an envelope to control the gate module, then however I change those parameters, that's also going to affect how the resonator sounds. And before we move on to the next control, I do want to point out that every mode in the mode menu has its own behind the scenes tweaks to things like the brightness and the nonlinear dial and the sustain. Now on to the nonlinear dial. As I just mentioned, depending on what mode you have selected here, gut, string, small chime, what have you, all have their own unique relationship with the nonlinear and sustain, brightness, etc. And what this does is it lets you smoothly apply a bunch of nonlinear effects that contribute to the flavor of the sound. So let's see how the sound of the gut string changes when we move the nonlinear dial. So now let's listen to how it sounds with the nylon string. It's almost like a bandpass filter effect. But honestly, to really show you the variation of sounds that you could get just with the nonlinear dial alone, I'd have to load up every conceivable sound I could into the granulator and then run that through the resonator. So we don't have time for that. So let's move on. And now we are going to talk about the in position, not to be confused with an imposition. And what this does is it lets you set the position within the resonator mode at which it is excited by incoming audio signals. Changing this dial will produce a shifting spectrum of resonant frequencies. Let's try the large spring. and medium chime, why not? Mm -hmm. 
And now onto the pitch control. The pitch of each resonator can not only be controlled with the key module, your MIDI keyboard, the sequencer, but you can also apply continuous modulation to it and get some really, really wild stuff. So let's check this out in action. I'm going to turn up our resonator with the gut string. Now I'm going to run a melodic sequence into our granulator. And you'll notice now our resonator is changing along with the sequence that's going into the granulator. So there you can hear that the pitch of the resonator is following the granulator. After all, the granulator is what's going into the resonator to stimulate it. Before I do any wild modulation, something I do like to do is turn up the delay on the sequencer so we get two related but you know different sequences coming out of the sequencer and now I'm going to put the second one into the pitch input of the resonator. So now it's following what the granulator is doing but it's also deviating a little bit depending on how much delay I'm adding to the sequencer. And you may have noticed, wait, are there two inputs for the pitch? Yes. So why don't we take a quantized LFO from the LFO 2D and put that in for a second input. Now let's take this second sequence out of the sequencer, out of the resonator, and put the second output from the LFO 2D into it and we'll turn up our granulator into the mix as well. And now on to the brightness control, which is very simple but rather important. Let's bring up our small spring here. Now watch what happens as I adjust the brightness knob. So here it is all the way down. And then we'll go all the way up. So you can hear it kind of acts like a really lightly applied low pass filter, but it just basically removes some of the higher frequencies out of the sound. Next up is another simple but very, very important feature within the resonator, and that is the pan control. So let's bring up our sound here, and it works like any other pan in your DAW. You get your sound all the way to the right, all the way left. This is really cool for mixing and whatnot, but it really, really shines brightest when you start modulating it. Let's just modulate a little bit of everything that we've talked about so far because I feel like the more that is going on within the resonator uh, as far as modulation goes, the more dramatic and interesting the pan control becomes. Now let's add our dry signal into it as well. Let's talk about the wet and dry dials here within the resonator. So as you probably imagined, the dry dial, this controls how much of just the granulator is going to the output. And then the wet dial controls how much of the resonator signal you're going to be sending into the output. All right, that is the resonator video. Thank you so much for watching. Up next, we're gonna talk about the body and the output, and then we will be done with Kaivo, and you will now have everything you need to start making amazing music. If you would like more information on Kaivo or to learn more about all the other great soft synths from Madrona Labs, there's a link in the video description. Thank you so much for watching.